Welcome to Municipal Affairs. I'm Christopher Brown. Over the last two weeks, our team has been traveling across Saskatchewan in preparation for our live Saskatchewan Provincial Election Night special exclusively on YouTube. During our journey across the Living Skies province, we connected with mayors, councillors, and other key stakeholders to understand how this election will shape the future of municipalities. And as the Saskatchewan election continues to unfold, you will certainly need to stay informed with the Scoop Political Briefing newsletter. It is your go-to source for daily updates on the biggest stories, party strategies, and even candidate advertising. I certainly took advantage of it during our Cross Saskatchewan tour these last few weeks. So sign up for free at thescoop.ca. That's the S-K-O-O-P dot C-A. And get your essential insights about this election delivered straight to your inbox. Today, we are joined by Yorkton Councillor Randy Golden, who will share their unique perspectives on this provincial election and its significance for municipalities. Attention Saskatchewan. This election season, Municipal Affairs is hitting the road in partnership with SUMA for the Saskatchewan provincial election. Join us on election night for live coverage straight from Regina on YouTube featuring exclusive insights from municipal leaders and stakeholders across the province. We will be capturing their reaction to the results and be diving into what the new provincial government means for municipalities. Plus, this fall, we will be traveling across Saskatchewan to hear directly from local leaders about the issues that matter most to you. Plus, this fall, we will be traveling across Saskatchewan starting September 30th to hear directly from local leaders like yourself about the issues that matter most. This is your election covered like never before. Municipal Affairs, your trusted voice from the grassroots to the government. Councillor, thank you so much for doing this. Greatly appreciate it. Um, there's a provincial election going on right now. From your perspective, from a local perspective, what are you hoping to hear from the party leaders to bring back to Yorkton to make you feel comfortable, whoever the next government is? What we're hearing, and I'm hearing this from our residents uh, across the city, uh, they're definitely concerned about the infrastructure. So it's the, uh, the roads, the streets, the quality of life infrastructure. They're wanting to see more recreation facilities and whatever they enjoy doing. They're also very concerned right now about the mental health and addictions that are happening in our community, which clearly, although they're happening here, is definitely a provincial responsibility. Uh, we can work with the provincial government, but that's not one of our legislated responsibilities. You talk about the provincial jurisdiction. You're also running in your own municipal campaign right now. I know it's still early days for that campaign, but when you're talking to residents, are they addressing provincial issues or are they addressing more municipal issues when they're talking to you? Or are you dealing with both? <laughs> We're dealing with both because uh, we always say that municipal elected officials are closest to the people, and indeed they are. Uh, whether you're going to get your groceries or whether you're taking your children to the rink or to the pool or to a cultural activity, people, you're very accessible. And our residents always feel very free and open to talk with us. So we're hearing that. So in my opinion, when we take these issues to the provincial government, we're hearing from the people that are going to be casting votes. There's still less than two weeks away until voting gets underway in the provincial election. Uh, is there something that you're hoping that the party leaders will address in those two weeks' time uh, from a Yorkton perspective or, as in your other role as president of ASUMA, from a municipal spec uh, perspective? Well, clearly the provincial government is who is has the responsibility for municipalities. Uh, and we've been saying over and over, municipalities need autonomy and sustainability. And with that comes the issues around downloading to us with no funds coming to us. We need to know what we're responsible for and what we need to do. And we need additional revenue streams. What worked when this started 
in uh, the late 1800s when the Constitution of Canada came down for the tax model, because it was then that it started, is not clearly, clearly is not working now. Just the costs of everything that we do, whether it's infrastructure or services we provide, we are having difficulty meeting those budgets. What are you looking for from your member communities from SUMA's perspective to ask their local candidates in the next two weeks before voting gets underway? Is there something that your members can do to make sure municipal issues are at the forefront locally as well, not even just provincially wide? Well, really, when our uh, you know when our our munis I'm sorry our provincial representatives are going around their door knocking and they're asking for your vote, we would like our residents to say, all right, what are you going to do for municipalities? What are you going to do for helping with policing, with mental health and addictions? What are you going to do? about the potholes on our streets. We need you to step up because clearly that is also part of your responsibility. Final question before I let you go here, Randy, and that is, what do you want the people of Saskatchewan to do before they put that X beside that name? You talk about what your members should be doing, but what should the residents of Saskatchewan be doing before they go into that ballot box and make that final decision? Well, they're making a decision that is going to really um, be a part of their lives for the next four to five years. So take a look at our SUMA website, SUMA.org, and we have all of these things laid out. This is what is needed in our municipalities, and this is what affects the people the most. So take a look at that, and when you go in, look at the party um, policies, the platforms that they're offering, and make your decision that way. But be clear and informed when you're making your decision. Thank you so much for tuning in for another episode of Municipal Affairs. We just want to take a moment and ask you to do one quick favor for us. If you haven't already, be sure to hit that subscribe button. You will not want to miss the upcoming episodes around the Saskatchewan election, but also you will not want to miss our special election night special live from downtown Regina, where we will be discussing how this election will impact the municipal landscape over the next four years. So if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. And if you're listening to this on audio, head over to our YouTube channel, Cross Border Interviews or Cross Border Networks, and subscribe today. And if you haven't already, be sure to head over to the scoop.ca and get that insightful newsletter delivered directly to you every weekday, directly to your inbox. I use it as a resource when I was traveling across the province of Saskatchewan, and it is a resource that you surely will want to have. And your support has been wonderful over the last few weeks and over the last few months and even last few years. So we truly appreciate you taking time and watching and listening to all these great episodes and great interviews that we've been putting out. So stay connected. Stay informed, and we'll see you next time here on Municipal Affairs. <laughs>